I am on the water with my dogs to talk to you about foxtails. And that's not a coincidence. I'm on my paddleboard on this lake because it is one of the last places I can go with my dogs outdoors without them being exposed to potentially life-threatening seeds of invasive plants. That's not an exaggeration. My dogs have gotten foxtails more often than I would like to admit, and that's even with me being careful and limiting where they go. I had to move out of the Bay Area a couple of years ago, and where I'm currently living, I have watched change before my eyes. In just a two year period of time, areas that I used to go jogging, barefoot jogging no less, and take my dogs exploring, I can't go there at all anymore not just for the discomfort that i feel going through there but because i'm not going to subject my dogs to getting thorns to the faces or these seeds that dig into their flesh it is now all dominated by these invasive plants and the management techniques that are being used to supposedly contain the problem have only made it worse we'll come back to that Last month, I filmed this footage of myself and the dogs down at the creek, and I was talking about how I have to carry them down into the actual creek bed because between the parking lot or the sidewalk or the paved path and the water, it's all invasive plants. And that's not a joke. The dogs decided to run up on the bank briefly to uh, explore something, and within seconds, they were completely embedded. So today I actually had to carry them to the water's edge and get them on the paddleboard because if you're not looking at trees, some of the only native plants left, you look down at the ground and everything is covered in invasive plants. In an act of desperation, I drove back down to the Bay Area and took my dogs hiking on the coast right next to the ocean on steep cliffs of Montara where it is still predominantly native plants. And guess what happened? Wolf Bear got a foxtail on his ear, even there. I've been learning a lot about plants over the last couple of years, so now I can actually identify them. And on that hike, I identified 30 plants. The biodiversity is wonderful, but guess what else was there? Now the foxtails are there too. And guess what is right over the hill? a ranch. And guess what's on the other side of the hill? A ranch. This brings us to the topic of what exactly is a foxtail? Well, as you may have guessed from my reference of the ranch, it is an agricultural plant. And you wouldn't guess that from reading articles because for some reason they all seem to shy away from calling them out for what they are. A foxtail is not its own species of plant. It encompasses several plants. It is not this mysterious native plant of California that happens to be the bane of dog owners. It was brought here. It was introduced to California by animal agriculture in the early days of settling the West Coast. Other names for foxtails that aren't used as often, brome, cheatgrass, wild oats. It's not just one specific plant, it's any of them with the seeds that like to burrow as though they are living organisms into the flesh and cavities of your pets and wild animals. How could it possibly be limited to just domestic animals? Now there are many, 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 many species and subspecies of plants that fall under the category of foxtail grass. But the ones that are bloody everywhere now are the ones that were introduced. That's how invasive plants work. They take over and now they are bloody everywhere and they are getting into the noses of our dogs every year and they're causing brush fires every year. Those are not the ones that are native plants. And this is with me just talking about the ones that we know for sure get into our dogs' noses, ears, mouths, and even dig through their flesh. I'm not even complaining about the ones that are just plain thorny, like the yellow star thistle, milk thistle, bull thistle, or these crazy looking fillery seeds, or the oats, all introduced, all invasive. I don't see oats listed under goat grass, but I have had these pulled out of wolf bear's eardrum more than once. 
look at this slender oat. Now see where I circled there? Now follow that and that thing that looks like a long spider leg, the entire thing gets in your dog. That is what gets pulled out of his eardrums. And this is what was pulled out of April's tiny little nose. I don't know how something that big got in there, but that must have been really unpleasant. And let me tell you something, that's only part of the nightmare. Watching your dogs try to recover from the anesthesia, it's not pleasant. Now one article suggested that wild animals have learned to avoid the plants, but that just leads to another sad topic that they're unavoidable. They are spreading like wildfire. Where we have not developed in an urban manner, where we have not taken over for agricultural purposes, everything in between, you see a field of brown and gold. Those are invasive plants that have taken over the native plants and they're ready to burn. So a little side note, not only are these things the bane of your pets, but they are the reason we have our wildfires in California. All those golden hills that you drive past on the highway are invasive agricultural plants. California was not always the golden state. By the time we joined the Union, the native habitat had already been destroyed by the plants brought here by animal agriculture. How dare I be such a dick to call out agriculture. But you can do a quick Google search for exactly where those plants originated from and who brought them here, and you will have your answer. Or you can use logic. Do you believe that beautiful California was always a hell for animals because of these plants? Do you believe that California was always stricken with devastating wildfires? We did that, not nature. I'll quickly address some of the defeatist, naive arguments that are brewing in minds out there right now that, hey, California always had fires. Yes, California did always have fires. Everywhere has fires sometimes, just not the types of fires that we have now, the devastating ones that get worse every year because of us. Now wrap your minds around this. Fire itself isn't bad. Native plants come back from fire life comes back even stronger from fire. What our native plants could not come back from was the relentless, never-ending grazing of these massive livestock animals. It is no coincidence that the locations where we still have some native grassland and we have some native plants are the inaccessible steep hills that agriculture has not managed to take over yet. Fire gets there and plants come back from that. It's where agriculture has reached that the plants don't recover. But as my personal experience in Montara demonstrated, even these areas aren't safe anymore. Wind carries these invasive seeds. These urban grazing programs that are so popular now where they unleash goats into the hillside, that is spreading the problem. Allowing ranchers to graze their cattle on public land is spreading the problem. Even horse tours going through these areas are spreading the problem. Where do you think these horses go after they've served their duty as slaves to humans? Back to the ranches. What do you think they're being fed at these ranches? What kind of plants do you think are out of control at those ranches? The only way to get this under control is to stop what we are currently doing. And that's what's so maddening about it because instead of stopping, we're instead hearing that we should be pursuing more of the problem. And why? because that lie benefits a very specific industry. We all know who I'm really talking about, but no one wants to say it because again, how dare you be so evil as to call out the people who have destroyed the entire Western United States for their livelihood while saying that they're feeding the American people and following a way of life. Listen, multi-generational ranching is not an excuse for being a piece of shit. Multi-generational ranching does not mean that history began when you began. You brought this shit from Europe. California was not an agricultural state and California was once much more beautiful than it is now. The beautiful spots that remain are under attack from the continual spread of these invasive plants. And making this increasingly frustrating are all the naive people spreading the lie that the solution to this problem is more of the problem. We have to graze this land with domestic 
livestock in order to fight the wildfire problem, in order to fight the spread of these invasive plants. Again, let's go back to logic before I attack this with science. The problem is the solution? Come on, people. So why isn't this proposed solution working? That's another video in itself. You'll have to wait till next time. For this one, I wanted to just wake people up that these foxtails that literally kill our pets are not native to California. It's not a California problem. But the reason that I associated it with California is because it was new to me when I moved to California. So now here I am as a dog owner facing the reality that I have to drive to a forest or the ocean in order for my dogs to go outside without being subjected to these lethal plants. And I wonder why wasn't that a problem when I was growing up in the Midwest? There were tick problems, there were other problems, but I grew up in the country and we let the dogs roam wherever they wanted to roam. There were no boxtail problems there. Well, as I alluded to earlier, not everything in the United States started from the east and moved west. There were some people who began on the west and those who did brought their agricultural animals with them, which devastated the native plants because native plants evolved and adapted to the climate here and the animals here. When you bring something from somewhere else, not to mention that it's not even a wild animal in the first place, but a domesticated livestock animal that moves through and just eats everything in its path, the native plants didn't stand a chance. They got wiped out. And when they were wiped out, that left a foothold for the seeds of the invasive agricultural plants that were also brought over at the same time as those agricultural animals to take root and dominate. That's their nature. Our native plants in California don't have a fighting chance against those types of plants. And that's why the West is dominated by them now. And I haven't even started talking about milk thistle and yellow star thistle. Right now, today, even though those other weeds are terrible, I'm talking about the ones that will kill your dogs all so we can indulge in something that we don't need but we want while proclaiming that it's an American way of life. Destroying California, destroying the West. And guess what? These plants have now made it to the East Coast. They haven't dominated it yet, but you guys are up next. Big picture, look forward to a life of nothing but concrete and lawns that aren't supposed to exist in the first place because wild habitat will be gone. That's a tough pill to swallow for today, so we will wait and attack on a scientific level exactly why the methods being used to combat invasive plants aren't working and why our so-called experts continue to pursue them.